Hello everybody. For most places in the world that aren't America, the big, naturally aspirated, multi-cylindered, front-engined, rear-wheel drive sporty coupe seems to be on the brink of extinction. So if I were the kind of petrol head who was really into that kind of salt of the earth, back to basics, big grin thrill stuff, I'd want to make sure I knew about every car out there, and that includes the ones that got away, of which this is definitely an example. I'm sure many people will look at it and go, ah, oh, that's an Infiniti G37, and you'd be nearly right. It's actually a Nissan Skyline 370 GT, part of the V36 generation. Yes, it is a Skyline, a real Skyline. No, they didn't just make the R32, 3 and 4, there were many generations. I've actually driven a very close relative of this car, which is the sedan version of the same generation, a 55th anniversary edition, possibly one of the only in the country. And this belongs to the same lovely chap Brad, who as you can probably tell has a real thing for his quirky Japanese stuff. This car on the face of it is very much the same as the saloon, barring the fact it's lost a couple of doors, has a slightly more sloping roof line, and I think is actually a fairly handsome, if not spectacular looking car. Mechanically, it's the same thing. You've got 3.7 litre Nissan naturally aspirated V6 up the front, driving the rear wheels, and in the middle, you had a choice of a couple of gearboxes. This is a seven speed automatic. Earlier versions of this car came with a five speed exclusively. The seven speed automatic came in as part of a facelift for the 2009 model year. This must be one of the earliest examples of that because it's on an 08 plate. To drive, it does actually feel distinctly different to the four-door, and it's actually quite a nice thing. The engine and gearbox work fairly well together when you're just poodling along in drive mode. This car's a little bit more vocal than standard because it's now got a very sporty cat fitted and also a panel air filter. It's been remapped by Abbey Motorsport and is now putting out a little bit more power than standard. Originally, it would make 335 horses. Now it's closer to about 360. This car is what's known as a Type SP. I have to say, I love the way the Japanese do their trim designations. This car came in several different flavours. You had the base, which was still relatively well specified. Then you could get the Type P for premium, which had full leather, heated interior, some nicer wheels on it, various other bits. Or you could get the Type S, which has larger Akibano brakes, 19-inch front wheels, which is better than the Type S in the saloon, which only got 18s and didn't get the brakes, and a few other small flourishes as well. Or you could get this, which is the Type SP. No prizes for guessing, that gets you the best of both. I've got to say, although it doesn't look particularly spectacular in here, it all works rather well. There is a way to upgrade all of this stuff here, which is currently in Japanese, for an English system that does more or less the same thing. To completely convert this car to something a European would use, it's going to cost you about £1,500 to £2,000. But for that, you will get a system that looks very much OEM. actually also handles really quite nicely. Seems to be a little bit more sure-footed than the Saloon, which had a very keen turn and a bit like my Maserati Quattroporte. But this actually is really quite nice. The steering's got more of a weight to it than you would expect. That feels like it's been changed from the Saloon again. There aren't really any driving modes in here beyond a button down here for snow. The gearbox has normal and manual. I've been driving it in just drive for now, but in a second I will put it into manual and we'll see what she's like when you really start pushing on. Also, like my Maserati, when you began to really press on, the saloon didn't like it all that much. So I'll be interested to see if this copes any differently. I do really love the way that this car feels. It seems terribly underrated for what it is, probably because we never really got the chance to decide whether we liked it or not. I have to say, this car is actually really impressing me. I didn't have super high expectations of it because it is still a coupe in very much the same way that a 3 Series would be. Underneath, you've still got relatively humble underpinnings, but it actually seems set up by people that really 
do like their driving. There are weak points, the engine does need revs to do its best work, and even then it's not particularly potent. The gearbox also is a little bit lethargic. The shifts themselves seem quite quick, but they're not very smooth and they're not very responsive either, which is a shame because these paddles feel amazing. The same as on the saloon, actually. They've got a sort of leather backing to them and a really, really deliberate action. Love them. <laughs> The red line is at just over 7,000 RPM, although the engine doesn't seem that keen to visit it all too often. The steering does pick up a real weighting once you start pressing on. And although it's still not the most agile of things, you have a real confidence in it. This car is currently riding on the standard sport dampers, which came as part of the Type S or SP package, and they're really well set up for the road. The last one of these that I drove was on aftermarket springs, and even that impressed me. This I'm really shocked by. For a Japanese performance car, they tend to be a little bit too stiff for our own roads. This, not at all. Very well set up. As a coupe, your rear seat space is a little bit compromised, but certainly more useful than you'd find, say, a 911, Jaguar XK, that sort of thing. It also does generally feel quite high quality. Yes, you've got a little bit of vinyl or plasticky stuff up here, but there is enough leather, I think, to keep most people satisfied, including myself. It is actually, I think, the gearbox which really lets proceedings down. One of these with a manual in it, I think, would be a lot of fun. It will light the rear tyres up quite easily. It's currently riding on Nankangs, which seem to be in good condition, so it's a very, very lively rear end. But if you're the sort of person that was on the hunt for a 370Z, if only it had back seats in it, this does give you that kind of vibe. And for the sort of 10 to 12,000 pounds it's going to cost you to import one of these and then convert it to Euro specification, I think it's actually a reasonable amount of car. Not, I think, an obvious thing for many people to buy, and for that kind of money, I'd probably send a lot of people towards either a Jag or a BMW or an Audi or any one of the equivalents that we did get sold here when new. But for me, this is actually a very very credible alternative if you're willing to put up with the hassle of getting a car, getting it converted and all that stuff. And this I like too because it's another example of an unusual, genuinely JDM car that you don't see all that often, which you can own and drive without too many compromises. The boot is a good size. Yes, the rear seats are more usable than in a 911. The front seats are really comfortable, love them. Everything just about works. Brakes are good, throttle's good, gearbox okay, not so good, but the steering is great and the car feels genuinely very well made. It's not creaking, it's not rattling, it's not squeaking. Very nice thing to be in. You can tell when the car's reached its limit because the front end takes on just a hint of vagueness, but the steering feels connected enough that it's not disconcerting, it's not too scary, it's just a very, very clear sign that you should probably back off now. It turns into a corner quite well, and honestly, feels very, very planted. You've got a sense of connection with this car that you don't get in very many coupes these days. I'll tell you something, I'm a bit of a steering aficionado. The more miles I put on this car, the more I enjoy it. It's so beautifully weighted and actually does report back to you a little bit more than you initially think. So, no more I think to say about this car. Thanks again to Brad for bringing it out today. Thanks to you for watching. Please like, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.